Okay, so what we're going to be learning in section 7.2 is graphing rational functions. And I've used the word rational. This word rational I've used a few times over the past couple chapters. The word rational has the word ratio in it. And what's a ratio mean we're talking about? What's ratio? It's gonna be the longest video ever. What is a ratio? Who knows what a ratio is? All right. It is a fraction. It's comparing two numbers by division. It's a fraction. So today we're graphing equations that are rational, that are fractions. The parent function for this rational equation, the parent function is going to be 1 over x. The parent function is 1 over x. And you can see the picture of it, and we'll, we'll talk about how we get that picture. Um, this shape of the graph is called a hyperbola. A hyperbola. This rational equation is um, rational because the variable is in the fraction, the variable is in the denominator. Something like uh, x over 5, y equals x over 5, is not rational. And that's because one-fifth multiplied by x is the same thing as x over 5, and this is linear. To get rational, we have to have the x in the denominator. And one more thing about this parent function. Sometimes we will call it the reciprocal function. Because 1 over x is a reciprocal of x. Okay, and then this right here is just kind of saying a little bit of what I was saying. Um, it's in the form of a fraction. It says where P of X and Q of X are both polynomials. So um, really what's mostly important is that Q of X has an X in it. Okay. The graph of this, we have two symmetrical pieces. There's two pieces to it. And these two pieces are called branches. Like tree branches. There are two symmetrical pieces called branches. We have asymptotes. So we learned about asymptotes um, in the last section. I, is that the first time we've seen asymptotes? Maybe. Um, asymptotes are kind of like these imaginary lines where the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to it, but it's just going to approach it. It's never going to actually reach that amount. 
So we're gonna have two asymptotes. We're gonna have an X asymptote and a Y asymptote. For one over X for the parent function, the asymptotes are at X equals zero and Y equals zero. X equals zero is vertical, Y equals zero is horizontal. The domain, it talks about the domain, but I'm gonna write it here. The domain would be everything except zero. It's gonna be all real numbers except zero because that is where the asymptote is. And then the range are gonna be all the real numbers except for zero. So notice that the asymptotes and the domain and range are related to each other. The asymptotes are where the graph doesn't cross and the domain and range are showing you where the graph doesn't cross, what the graph isn't equal to, okay? So we are gonna graph a function that is in the form of y equals a over x. So we're going to start with a table. And 4 over x is going, is going to be our parent function. Now, I can, I can do this one with uh, transformations. If we start talking about transformations, this one here is going to be 4 times this one, so it's gonna be a vertical stretch. It's gonna be a vertical stretch by a factor of four. But I'm actually going to make this even easier on us. We're not gonna worry so much about transformations if it's just four over X. I'm gonna pick X's that make sense to do four over X. I'm gonna pick X's that are easy for me to graph four over X. What is an easy X to plug in here and do four over X? What is an easy X that I could get a nice number for? Think ahead. One, somebody said one. Yeah, I can plug in one. If I plug in one, then I'm going to get four over one, which is four. So one four is one of the points. What's another easy one that we could plug in? Four, okay. I'll plug in four and I'm gonna get four over four, which is one. What's another easy one that we could plug in? Yeah, just two. Okay, so if we plug in two, four over two, that's two, so two, two. You see it's starting to make a little curve. What else can we plug in? Ella, can you give me a number I could plug in? Zero. If I do four over zero, I'm doing something that we're never, ever, ever, ever allowed to do. What am I doing right now? Never allowed to do it. What am I doing right now? Four over zero. What am I doing? Nobody knows. I'm dividing by zero. Can you divide by zero? You can never take a number over zero. See, if I write number over zero, it says no. You can't do that. So if we try this, this is undefined. Yay. So that one's gonna be undefined. Anything that is undefined is an asymptote, OK? 
Okay, so that's actually how we got one of these asymptotes um, for the original graph. And once it loads up, I will uh, start writing on it again. If you're watching at home, we had a power failure and I gotta wait for the thing to boot back up. It's working. Okay, so plugging in zero is giving us undefined, which means that this is an asymptote. At x equals zero. So on my graph, I'm gonna graph x equals zero as a dashed line. And I just changed the color so you can see a little bit better. Um, Emma, will you plug in those lights that are right by your chair? Yeah. Thank you. All right. I need some more numbers. You see I left a space. That wasn't by accident. Give me a number. Yell one out. Let's go. Brian, yell something out. Negative one. negative one. Negative one when I plug it in is going to give me negative four. Somebody yell one out. You guys want to have time to work on your assignment or you want the notes to take an hour and a half? Yell something out. Aya, come on. Negative two. If I call you and you yell stuff out when I call you, you can do it sooner. Negative two, negative two. Somebody yell one out. What? Eight. Okay. It's not the one I was looking to hear, but that's okay. We'll do it. That gives me four over eight, which is a half. So eight is a half. And you can see that it's getting closer and closer to something. Yell one out. Negative four. Negative one. Okay. At this, oops, that's, I went to negative five by accident. <laughs> I think that these are enough points because we know what the graph should look like. Um, we have one of the asymptotes from our table. We're not going to be able to get the other asymptote from our table. We just have to know that the other asymptote is going to be at y equals zero. And we'll talk about what will change those asymptotes. And then you're going to connect the points that you have and just make it look like that same hyperbola shape that was in the notes previous. We just have a few, whoop, that was bad. We have a few points to um, plot. So you're going to graph the next one. Oh, it says compare to the graph of one over X. It says that here too. Um, that's like saying that it's four times vertical stretch. That's the thing that I had written above it. So we should be able to look at this and just knowing um, transformations, you should be able to tell me ahead of time what negative six will do to the graph but I'm not gonna say it yet. I want you to take a moment and I want you to fill out X's that work, that are easy for you to graph. I want you to plot those. So I see that I'm gonna be dividing whatever X's I pick by, or into negative six. So I'm gonna pick factors of negative six. Do you guys know what I mean by factors? Does anybody know what I mean by factors? It's an R. Do you guys know what I mean by factors? Well, factoring something is to break apart what multiplies it. So factors of six would be like two and three or one and six. Those are the factors of six. It's negative six, but 
six. Okay, so that's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing those factors. Okay, when I plug them in, we're gonna get one, two, three, six, negative six, negative three, negative two, negative one. There are asymptotes at x equals zero and y equals zero, and they're gonna be that asymptote if you just have a number over x. Every single time, it will be those asymptotes if you just have a number over x. So negative six, one, three, two, negative two, three, negative one, six, and then one negative six, two negative three, three negative two, and six negative one. Okay, then we start adding in translations. We're going to slide them left, right, up, or down. You guys have done translations a lot. Um, so the translations we're going to show as H and K. And we've used H and K before as horizontal and vertical translations in other equations. Um, <clears throat> for H, it's going to be horizontal because it's in the denominator with the X. So that's how we know it's horizontal. And if it's horizontal, what do we do when we go to move it? We do the same number. If it's horizontal, what do we do to horizontal transformations, guys? What do we do? Since chapter one. Brooke, what do we do? We do the opposite. But vertical is the same. So the asymptotes now are going to be at x equals h and y equals k. So whatever transformations you do, whatever translations you do horizontally, that becomes the asymptote. Vertically, that becomes the asymptote. So here we go. In this situation, I'm going to write down my asymptotes before I even do anything with the table. Write down my asymptotes, okay? X equals, now we're going to look for our H, and we're going to do the opposite of it. The H is in the denominator with the X. So Warren, what number is going to be the opposite of the number in the denominator with the X? Negative two, that is our X asymptote. And then y asymptote is going to be the number on the outside of the fraction that is either adding or subtracting. We keep the same sign. So Tessa, what's that going to be? Negative, negative 1. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to mark x equals negative 2 with a vertical line and y equals negative 1 with a horizontal line. So those are now my asymptotes. So the branches are going to be in two quadrants of this. Okay, I'm going to start out with x and negative 4 over x. I'm going to start out with x and negative 4 over x. And I'm going to choose factors of 4 or negative 4. I'm going to choose negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 4. And I'm choosing those factors of 4 because it just makes it easy numbers for me. I don't wanna to have to do extra work if I don't have to. So one, two, four, negative four, negative two, negative one. Then we're gonna do transformations. 
So the X's says plus two, so I'm gonna subtract two from the X values. Negative six, negative four, negative three, negative one, zero, two. And then the Y's, we're gonna subtract one from the Y's. And those are the points that we're gonna graph. So once you get those plotted, you have these two branches that look symmetrical, the hyperbola. We're gonna write our domain and our range. So I told you this before, the domain and the range is basically what the asymptotes are, but what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say it's all real numbers except X cannot equal negative two. And the range, all real numbers, except y cannot equal negative 1. So I'm using not equal instead of equals. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. And we're gonna do three examples on our own. But I'm gonna walk around so when you have questions, you can ask. The examples are gonna be just like this. Three examples on your own. All right, for this, for the um, student practice, I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna look at the transformations. So down here, there's nothing with the X. That means that X equals zero does, does not change from the original. There's no plus or minus changing that number. And then X, not X, Y equals negative two would be the asymptote for the, um, the horizontal asymptote. So I've got X equals zero and Y equals negative two. Then I'm gonna choose some ordered pairs that fit with three over x. So I'm gonna check, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a negative three, negative one, one, three. Now plug those in, I'm gonna get negative one, negative three, three and one. And then I have to subtract two from the y side. So using that transformation of minus two on the y's, I'm gonna subtract that and I'm gonna graph the ordered pairs. Negative three, negative three. Oops. Uh, negative one, negative five. One, one. and three, negative one. And then you guys know what the shape should be. So you can connect these. Yes, Jess. Oh yeah, you can have more points for sure. Um, six would be fine because then you end up with like a half. So yeah. Okay, and then the domain and the range. come from the asymptotes, the domain, 
x cannot equal zero. It's everything else, but it cannot equal zero. And the range y cannot equal negative two. So that comes from the domain and the range. I mean, from the asymptotes. All right, question three. Starting with the asymptotes. So for this one, I do have something added to the x. So x does not equal negative 4. I do not have, I'm sorry, this is not, not equal to, I'm sorry, that's the domain. There we go. Equals negative 4. Y equals, I do not have anything added on the outside of this fraction. So that'll be a 0 for the y. Let me go ahead and just do the asymptotes over here while I'm up here. So for this one, the asymptotes... Uh, x would equal 1 and y would equal 5. Okay, so make a table for number 3. So number 3 has a 1 on top. So when we talk about using factors for x, it's not really many factors for a negative 1. So when we have negative 1 on top, I suggest using negative 2, negative 1, negative a half, a half, 1, and 2. All the other numbers on top will give you easy factors. This one, I throw a half in there, um, and you'll see why in a second. But when I plug in negative 2, so I have negative 1 over negative 2, I get a half. That's easy to graph. I plug in negative 1, I get positive 1. When I plug in negative a half, I get 2. So that's why I use the half, because it gives me a nice answer of two outside of it. And then for these next three, it's the same as those, only different signs. So a half, when I plug it in, it's going to give me negative two, and then negative one, and then negative a half. This has a minus four to the x's, nothing to the y's. So negative six, negative five, negative four and a half, which if we type it in Canvas, it will be negative nine halves. And then this one would be negative three and a half. When we type that in Canvas, it will be negative seven halves. And then negative three and then negative two. So my x was where? Negative 4. My y was at 0. I'm graphing negative 6, a half. Negative 5, 1. Negative 4, and a half, 2. Negative 3, and a half, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 1. And negative 2, negative a half. And then domain and range are the same values from the asymptotes. We just put do not equal or does not equal. How are we doing? One more example than a game? <laughs> okay. All right, so this last one, it has a one on top again. So I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, negative a half, 1 half, 1, and 2 for my x's. For the x's, we have a adding 1. For the y's, we have adding 5.
Just make sure when you do something like one and a half, we write it as an improper fraction, three halves, because that's how you're going to have to type it in. And I told you we're having a quiz next class over this, so you will have to type stuff in. So four and a half is nine halves. So negative one, four and a half, zero, four, one half, three, one and a half is seven, two is six, three is five and a half. Domain is X does not equal one, range Y does not equal five. Okay, pausing. The last section is, um, we're still graphing, but these are not given to us in the correct form for us to find the transformations. Do you see a difference in these formats? Do we see a difference in the formats? First of all, G of X, the first, the first one here, it has an X in the top and none of the other ones did. We only had X's in the bottom. So we can actually rewrite this using something that we learned way back in chapter four. We're gonna use division to rewrite. We use division to rewrite. Okay, division. Um, I'm gonna use long division and it's not gonna be very long. To me, long division for these is actually time saver than the other one, which is synthetic division. Use long division, I'm gonna put my three X plus five divided by X plus one. So we're just gonna actually divide the fraction. And remember when we do long division, the first thing we do is divide. We're gonna look at the X and the three X only and we're gonna divide those. And if you forget like how to divide those, off to the side, let's write three X over X and see what we get. Three X over X, what do I get? Three X over X, what do I get? Three, thank you. So we do divide. <coughs> then you have to multiply. And when we multiply, we distribute so I'm gonna multiply and I'm going to get three X plus one. No, plus three. Distribute, distribute, three X plus three. Then we subtract. And when we draw the line, change the signs. When we draw the line, change the signs. So now I can just add. And I get a remainder of two. And that's, that's it for dividing because there's nothing else to do. So it's very short to use long division for this. Now, after dividing this, I can rewrite the equation as the answer, three, plus the remainder over the divisor. So I rewrote this as my quotient, three, plus the remainder over the divisor. 
which is the same as 2 over x plus 1 plus 3. If you need to reverse the order, now it totally looks like the first ones we were doing. So we only have one new step on what we were doing in the first ones, and that's using long division to rewrite it. So if we're going to graph this guy, uh, asymptotes, what would be our asymptotes? Emma, what will be our x asymptote? Mm, no, we want to look at what's on the bottom with x. The new equation, I'm looking at this right here. Either of these, they're the same, so it doesn't matter which one you look at. Yes, you said minus three. That's fine, that's fine. So yes, negative one. Okay, and Jacob, what would be the y? Equal three. No. Y. y equals three, yes. So we could go over and let's graph x equals negative one, y equals three. And there's just a teeny bit of space over here. I'm going to write my domain in range. You know, x does not equal negative 1. Range y does not equal 3. And then I'll go ahead and graph it. So when we make our table. I'm going to do 2 over x. As the parent function, 2 over x, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. That's going to give me negative 1, negative 2, 2, 1. To our x's, we are going to subtract 1, the same thing we did to the um, asymptotes. To the y's, add 3. and then plot them. If you feel like two points is not enough on each branch, you can always put more. But all of these look the same. So as long as your points line up in a way that you could connect them, and make these two branches, then you've got enough. Yes? Yes. Sorry, I, did, I had to like think what you were asking. When you divide, you know, a, um, a fraction, is the numerator over the denominator, right? And then when we write it with long division, the numerator goes here and the denominator is what's dividing into it, yes. Okay, so the biggest goal for these is let's practice the long division, maybe set up a table, maybe not do every single tiny little bit of it. Um, and then I'll have you guys do one more all the way through. So we want to rewrite these using long division. What goes in the division is the numerator, x minus 1, and then outside would be the denominator, x plus 3. You're going to divide x by x, which is 1. Then we distribute. And then when you subtract, you draw the line and change the signs. 
and I get a negative four. So if you subtract wrong, you're going to get something wrong. You don't, you know, change the signs and, and you add them incorrectly. You're, you're going to get part of it wrong. The quotient is one plus the remainder over the uh, um, divisor. So it should still have the same denominator as it originally did. So you can write it this way, or you can switch the order if you want. If you want to write it as negative 4, x plus 3, plus 1, that is also okay. But it should not matter because the 1 is on the outside, the 3 is in the denominator. So those are the asymptotes. Um, Ketsia, can you give me the X asymptote? Can you say it again? It should be negative three because we're going to do the opposite of that. Okay. And then Holland, will you give me the Y asymptote? Correct. Y equals one. And then when we go to make our table for this one, when we go to make our table for this one, Ryan, can you tell me what X's I could use? Uh, negative four, negative two, negative one, and multiple four. Perfect. Those are the exact X's I would have picked also. You can do more if you want. I'm going to do the minimum, which this would be the minimum in my opinion. And then I'm not going to finish this one. After we find these points, then we would do um, subtract three for the X's, add one for the Y's. I'm not going to finish it though. Just um, we've already plotted a bunch of these today. Okay, next one. Let's practice the long division. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 4x and divide it into 2x. If we can't look at that and find the answer, then let's do 2x over 4x. Okay, what is 2x over 4x? Ella, do you have it? One half. I couldn't hear. I think other people were saying it also. One half. Sorry, I made that really small. One half is what we're going to put in there. So now we distribute the one half. Distribute. So one half times four, that's two X. One half times negative two is minus one. We're going to draw the line, change the sign, and I get a two left over. So my new equation is a half plus 2 over 4x minus 2. Or you could rearrange it if you want to. So what are our asymptotes? Warren, can you tell me the x asymptote? This one's actually tricky. I just, as, as I'm like saying that, then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have put you on the spot. To do the X asymptote, um, this is a little tricky, guys. It, this is the one where you can't have, we don't have this very often. This is the one where you can't have a number, a, not a number, a um, number other than one in front of this X and the transformation together. So we have to factor out the four. Oh, there's an easier way of doing it. Actually, let, let me let me take that back. This is the kind that you would factor out normally, but there's an easy way of doing this asymptote. 
set this equal to zero because what we don't want is we don't want the denominator to be zero. So if I set that equal to zero and I, and I solve it, oops, <laughs> as I'm thinking ahead, I get one half for the S asymptote. Okay, Warren, I'll ask for the Y instead, sorry. So we have asymptotes at a half and a half. Can we graph a half? Can we graph a half? It rhymes. Can we graph a half? The answer is yes. You just go halfway between a block. Halfway between a block, we can graph a half. Okay, and I'm not going to finish that one. Let's do the next one here. Okay, long division. So I'm first gonna divide negative x into negative three x. It's written right here if you wanna just look right there. When I divide those, what do you get left? What do you get left over? Tessa, what do you get? Three. So now I'm going to distribute that three. So get negative three X minus three. Then I'm going to draw the line, change the signs, and I get a five. So my new equation is going to be three plus five over negative X minus one. And you can rearrange it if you want. Um, Evody, can you give me the Y asymptote for this blue equation? Three, yes. Um, I didn't call anybody for the X asymptote because the X asymptote's a little bit trickier like the previous one that we just did. Does anybody want to try it, Tessa? Let me see. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. I'll move the X over. And so I get negative one equals X. Yes. That's what you said. Negative one. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And then, you know, when you go to make the table, I would use five over X for this one. And I would use, um, negative five, negative one, one and five, and I'm not gonna finish this one. Okay. So we just went over that. I want you guys to try number eight all by yourself from start to finish. See that you can do that one. See what questions you have for me. So actually graph all the way, find the domain and range, everything. Okay, so I already did the long division. And as I was walking around, I noticed that some of you are getting these two numbers in the wrong place. So the remainder always has to go on top. Yes. Oh, is it frozen? Sorry. The remainder always has to go on top of the quotient. So we put, not on top of the quotient, sorry, on top of the divisor. And then this is the quotient. So you got to remember that the quotient is going to be by itself. And then we do the remainder over the divisor as the fraction. Okay. Obviously, if you put the two and the one in the wrong place, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay. So I'm going to make my table. Oh, no, let me write my asymptotes first. 
So my asymptotes are going to be x equals negative 1 and y equals positive 2. <clears throat> Since the table is going to be 1 over x, I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 1 half, 1, 2. So get negative a half, negative one, negative two, two, one half. To the x's, we are going to subtract one. To the y's, we're going to add two. And remember, guys, if you have um, a mixed number, like negative one and a half, make sure you write it as an improper fraction, negative three halves, because that's how we'll type it into um, Canvas. What was I doing? My domain and range would be the asymptotes, but with not equal to. And then my graph, negative 3, 1 and a half, negative 2, 1, negative 1 and a half, 0. And then negative a half, 4, 0, 3. One is two and a half. Okay, and then, um, yes, Amar? If you typed it in Canvas, yeah. as long as I remember to put that as an answer, I'll try to remember. Like. If it's something like negative one third, which you're not going to have any that are negative one third because we're picking the numbers. But if it was, then you couldn't turn it into a fraction at that. I mean, a decimal because that would be a repeating number. So, yeah, I'll probably have this as an option as well. OK. All right. Um, just to remind you that there is graph paper for you to do your assignment. And when you do your assignment, if the question is, oh, it's missing a little thing. If the question is um, like not a graphing question and you only have the graph paper, just you can put it on the part that's, you guys know what I'm, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. Let me open up the graph paper. You know how the graph paper, it's going to look like this. So if it's a question that's like not a graphing question, you can just do it on the side. That, okay. Because the graph paper is like way more than you would need. All right, and if you guys have any questions, you let me know what is happening next class over this section. We will have a quiz next class. So you do your assignment today, tomorrow. You ask me questions at tomorrow's XH. You come see me. You can email me questions if you have them. You make sure you're ready to go by class next time. Okay?